give us the word of God this morning and the power to be made in the midst of evil. Almighty and everlasting God, in the midst of your love, in your grace, you sent your Son and your Savior, Jesus Christ, to take your power in our nature and to suffer right now for our loss. Give us the example of the
let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard the quality of God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and on the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So Pilate gave his verdict, 
that their demand should be granted. We released the man they asked for, and one of you had been put in prison for insurrection and murder. And he handed Jesus over as they had preached. As they led him away, they seized the man, and Serene, the son of Serene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it to Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. Jesus turned to them and said, Fathers of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death for the king. When they came to the place that's called Skull, the priest by Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to buy his clothes. And the people stood by watching. The leaders stopped at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanging there kept arriving and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. When the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus cried with a loud voice and said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. With the centurion, when the centurion saw that he had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly, this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned on beating their breath. But all of his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Kings. 
And of course, many people were there for this feast and festival and Passover. They came from all over to come to Jerusalem to celebrate. The people threw palm branches and coats along the road. And it was customary in that time for a king or a ruler to come in on a horse to show power um, when he conquered to conquer a town and symbolize the military might and force. However, Jesus flipped this tradition on his head, and he came on a donkey. And it was actually the fulfillment of the, the Old Testament prophecy of Judah and Zechariah, where it said that the king, the Messiah, would come riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, a symbol of humility and service. As the crowds were shouting Hosanna, the jealous Pharisees were telling them to quiet the crowd. They were making a spectacle of themselves. And Jesus wouldn't have it. He wouldn't be reconciled. He accepted this praise. And as he rode up to uh, the Holy Temple, he got off the donkey and walked inside and saw the temple in Israel. A temple of prayer became a temple of trading for sacred animals and buying things, not for its sacred ground. But for all this excitement that's happening, at that moment when he walked into the temple, and the Roman soldiers were around and looking at him, staring at his disciples, knowing that something is going to happen. He left the temple, and Mary watched him in the streets. And as they left, he looked at her and said, It has begun. It marks the beginning of the week where Jesus was cheered. He was praised, and then he was arrested, tried, beaten. And all these people that were praising him had turned their back on him, including his disciples. And then they would put his back on the cross. But why? Why did these early Christians turn on him? What were they missing that they didn't fight for Jesus? They were just cheering for him. You would think that they were all happy and that he was, they were on his side. Today, they're shouting Hosanna. And in a week, they'll be shouting crucify him. You know, the people are praising him and he has us, but many of them, perhaps, and praising him for the wrong reasons. Human ones. They certainly didn't know what was about to unfold, but they called him. Some praised him because they thought he was the King of Kings, the Messiah, the Chosen One. Happy that he was here among us. He performed miracles, he healed the sick, he raised the dead, and they praised him because he was serving them. It was convenient for them. And because they saw Jesus as a person that would defeat them, they thought that he would be a warrior, a king. Just like they freed the slaves in Israel, he would do the same for her own Lord. But the problem was that this is what was in their human mind. This is what they thought Jesus should be, not who Jesus was. While he was indeed the promised messianic ruler, he was not the kind of ruler that people wanted. And when they found out that he was a gentle king, one that wouldn't fight, one of peace and love, their words did not match their heart. And their commitment to him Died. And soon they would ask for Barabbas to be saved over Jesus. Their words and now their actions are showing that they don't match their heart. Or that they're Christ and his teachings. 
and his work and his deeds and his actions. So for us as Christians today, this passage should be a reminder that our faith is not one of the needs. It's not trendy. It's not where the best music is. It's where our heart is. It should be a reminder that we need to welcome Jesus into our hearts no matter what. No matter what time it is. To show our willingness to follow him. To welcome him into our hearts. To stand behind his words. Through our own actions and deeds. Not when it serves us. What Jesus was asking for today from these, these folks that passed over and from us as disciples is for an unwavering commitment. When we see the popularity of our faith or other people's faith waver over time, when our schedules get busy, we can miss you this all together. Many of us come to Jesus when expecting everything's going to go well, and when the bottom drops out, that's when we pray. Or ask God why. Jesus knew why he had come and exactly what he had come for. To save us when our relationship is in waver. To save us from our sins. To reveal that he is the son of God to whom we can trust. And all he was asking was for a trusting and committed relationship with him. Giving it all to him. A committed relationship that takes the good with the bad. And having trust that Jesus would never forsake us. So this is the essence and the start of Holy Week, why we've journeyed to this point, to remain committed to Christ, to not forsake Him, to begin to approach His biggest trials and His weakest points and His toughest days beside Him. In a week where Jesus suffered incredibly for us, and where our sins were the nails, that hung him on the cross. Now is the time to check in with Jesus. Not check out. Now is the time to become more committed. Not betray. Now is the time where we say we are with you, Jesus. Not crucify him. Take this upcoming holy week. Turn your complete focus on him. Connect with the human side of Christ's suffering and his love for us in the events of the next few days and as they unfold. Consider it all. But more importantly, consider having a need a more committed relationship with him. So on Easter Sunday, we can all shout. Please
peace and unity for the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Sankatash, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We ask your prayers for those who are sick, especially Patty, Nita, Meg, Ralph, Mike, Tony, John, Catherine, Pam, Danny, John, Mary, Carol, Cynthia, Michael, Ted, Donna, Eddie, Kate, Eddie, Norman, and Debbie Joe, and all people afflicted by the coronavirus around the world. Here is the Lord, for your mercy is granted. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays, especially Carol Baggs, and those celebrating anniversaries. We exalt you, O oh God, our King. And praise your name forever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. In our diocese and cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the witness of God's people at St. Paul's by the Sea of Ocean City and their supply clergy and the lay leadership of the parish. We ask for your continued prayers for Reverend Deacon Stephanie Clayhill and Lynn Wilgen as they discern their call to holy orders. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their, their trust in you. you. Lord, we ask you to hear the prayers of your people and to hold those from our parents and around the world in your heart. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us preach each other in the time of peace. Thank you. 
here at SCB here for um, a wonderful ministry again at the Pokemon Festival. Uh, this year, St. Mary's gave out over 400 Easter bags um, to uh, children, and uh, Rebecca and her family prepared the bags, and um, uh, I read them out with her, and then Kathy and Lynn took the second gift around 1 o'clock, and by then all the bags were handed out, but they had a plan to as always, and they gave out friends and coloring materials to the children, and um, it was just a fantastic day, and I'm looking forward to that ministry again next year. Um, as always, the Adequate Store continues to be volunteers. Uh, it's an important outreach ministry of our church, and if you know others that would like to participate um, in that, please let um, Rebecca know. Um, also, our UTA campaign, the Blue Boxes, continues to prevent um, we'll the collection of April. For those, um, I know that I've been dropping on my team, and I've got two huge bags full of change at this point. Um, and also our annual fuel letters went out, so uh, if you haven't sent it back to the church, please do so, um, so that we know what our giving are going to be left for the next year, so we plan appropriately. Uh, lastly, uh, Pokemon High School reached out to me for a direct appeal for snack food on um, ongoing ministry through the end of the year. I guess it's, uh, there's transition times between when the kids come in, between lunch and and their actual meal between, you know, after school and um, then their dinner. So um, if you want to do that, please feel free to drop off um, bags in the office and um, take those over to them. Um, also, you know, consider uh, contributing to my discretionary fund. I do use money from that fund in order to uh, special appeals like this. I will just go out and get them on behalf of St. Mary's. So feel free to, um, if you want to write a check, the discretionary fund in the, in the memo, and it will get deposited um, into my account. So, and then uh, just for awareness, we are starting to be the girls club at high school. So I'll be reaching out to them to see if we can, I can do some ministry work, or we can do some ministry work with them. <coughs> but I'm really excited about that program. A lot of people in the community didn't have a place to go. And uh, now we will be in that third school. So, um, the other announcements are the public, anything else. Next Sunday, we're having something after um, church. Uh, you know, right. <laughs> yeah, for the adults. And um, we're here, you know, Jesus is okay. But um, we have some fun plans. So we're looking forward to seeing everybody on this week. And our Lord is living in the community. Any other announcements? Yeah, just a reminder that St. Martha's Field meeting is this Wednesday at 1 o'clock in the park. So, and all the ladies in the church are welcome to attend. <laughs> So parish work day is going to be April uh, 30th, um, starts at 9 a.m., and uh, it's actually made it on the schedule this week, so that's, that's good. So we're really going to do it. <laughs> Before I do this, I had a call yesterday from Bob and Lawyer, and some of you probably know um, Ron um, had been in the hospital. He's home now, and he has bad bacteria on his heart. And so she has learned how to administer the, um, the antibiotic IV, and so she's doing that for him every day. And he's getting better, but she did ask for her prayers, and she gave him her permission, of course, to talk to you about it. Um, so he's, he's very tired this week. And so I guess we don't really want any visitors, but I'm sure that your cards and, and phone calls would be appreciated. Um, he's, got, he's got a lot of things lined up. I may have a little bit, but I'll get through the whole thing. But he's got a lot of things coming in the future that he has to do with And then uh, next Sunday for Easter, in the bulletin, it'll tell you that we're asking, usually on Easter we ask everybody to bring something, but bring something away. Um, a lot of a lot of families go out for Easter and they want a big dinner and so we don't want to, you know, burn anybody with a lot of extra work. But we do ask everybody to do something light and to share and we're going to have some plans for some games and prizes. We're going to make sure we should say that there's going to be prizes. 
of course, I'll be there. But my dentist is off, and I think it's going to involve hunting and running or something. I don't know. I'm excited. Okay, after that, let's do this. Blessings, everyone shares spiritually. And I just want to um, put in a blessing or a prayer for God that he is um, still on the road to recovery. Is there anybody else? Uh, Come on, yeah. Say a prayer for the guy that's going to go up in the lift this uh, this Wednesday <laughs> to repair our cross. He was up to uh, like about 80 foot the other day, and I was kind of scared just looking at him, and I was on the ground. And so he's going to go a little bit higher this time and uh, actually repair the cross. So it's uh, it's kind of a harrowing thing to watch. So say a prayer for that man. You don't know what he's talking about. The end of the arms of the cross blew off. And um, so we had to, to um, get a company to come in, and they were on it, and it wasn't, wasn't tall enough. <laughs> He's got to come back. Yes, sir, you're standing up. All right. Oh, all right. Pain to be in battle. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to follow a chief, but I'm going to attempt to do the best I can do. Um, uh, some of you could you stand over here? Oh, so thanks. Okay. Some some of you may know about this thing that Bonnie and I are doing. Um, I was on a plane going somewhere, and I can't remember where years ago, and I happened to open up a, a magazine, American Way, whatever you know, the magazines and things. And I read about this <coughs> this uh, gal who started this little thing. Uh, well, she was a foster care child. Uh, one, time, one time she was about four years old. And she progressed through foster care until somebody, uh, somebody uh, adopted her at 16. And then she went on to college and small things, got married. Nobody ever knew she was a foster care child except her adopted parents. And she had, one, she had two children, and uh, she told her husband one day, I want to do something for foster care kids because I was a foster care kid. She didn't know anybody. So she started this thing with her church um, uh, to collect clothes for kids from infants to 12 years old, something like that. Clothes, shoes, whatever, whatever good kind of stuff that they could get that they donated. And uh, they actually fostered, cared a couple of siblings, a 14, 15 year old sibling. And so the I forget the name of that thing. What is it? Uh, the, the, the folks that do 
things in the county to help the foster care of the kids. And there's, a, there's a name for that problem, I can't escape me right now. Uh, anyway, so one day they called her and they said, uh, look, we've got this infant that was left at, at somebody's doorstep and we'd like for you to take care of it for a while. Can you do that? And she said, sure, we can do that. And they eventually adopted him. His name was Caden. So when they called us, they, they started this thing with a church called Caden's Closet. I said, well, if I can ever get to the point where I can do something like that, I would like to. Well, I've got a building back here next to Catholic Church that George Young is in right now. So I asked George about it. At the beginning of the year, I said, George, I need the building back sometime in March. <laughs> George was real happy with me. And, uh, 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 Eddie, I call him Eddie. But Eddie wasn't real happy about that. But he said, yeah, okay, I understand. And I told him why. So we want to take that building and we want to turn it into a cadence closet. We'll talk. We'll say something else about it. And I made a donation. By now, I made a donation to uh, Community Foundation. So that money can come out of the community. That fund, it's for this can come out of that and go into into this thing so we can start it up and and get it going. Uh, there won't, won't be any, any paid people, there will be volunteer, there might be one or two paid people, I don't know. It'll be all volunteer. And the counselor back there has agreed to do our 529 CBK, whatever the hell it <laughs> what, what's the name of that thing? I don't know. I, I, she's agreed to do that for us, which we appreciate it. And there will be other people that will be on board and that stuff. All that stuff came out of the paper some time ago, and I could care less whether anybody knows about it. It doesn't make a difference to me, but it was a nice thing for the community foundation to have. Um, and so we are starting into this with some guidance from Crystal Davis, who's the lady I read the article about. Josh is going to go to Norfolk. There is one in Norfolk that was started by a pastor or there some guy. Cardinal Crystal Davis is very successful. There are other things that it could do as well, but we want to start off simply. And uh, uh, she talked about uh, baby clothes for people that, you know, some folks have babies and things they don't have clothes for. Them. So they could go there, get what they need, no names, no nothing, no, uh, just, just go there, get what you need. And we want to go to elementary school and elementary school to talk to the teachers so that if they know somebody that's in need, they can get us a script, something, a chip, you know, as you used to call it, and they give us a chip, and the chip can go to whoever the heck it is, and uh, it's there, and they can come in and get what they need. Um, anytime you can help children, I think, I, I think uh, that uh, probably Jesus would really want us to do that. Uh, among other things. Uh, but I, I think, you know, we, we have to take care of our kids because they're the ones that will uh, sort of be here when we're no longer here. And that's the reason I like, uh, like our young gentleman back there, you know, if we would like for him to be here for a long time. So I just want, I, I know y'all have heard bits and pieces of this. Just wanted to bring it all together, all that I have together. It's not together yet. We got to get in that building. We got to get through some things in that building. Um, we don't know how to set it up. I mean, we, we just don't know. But we will follow along as it goes along. And I intend, Josh and I intend. Josh got a whole lot more gifted dad than I have. So, uh, but he's a politician, so he's supposed to. But, so, uh, and by, beside that, he's running for office, by the way. So, so if you wish to count, we appreciate you, but, uh, so, uh, but what we'd like to do is go to churches and other things and say, look, we're not here asking for your money. We're asking for whatever clothes you might have and things that might be serviceable. We're going to put, eventually we're going to put a couple of new washing machines in there, commercial type stuff. So all the stuff gets cleaned up, gets dried, gets sanitized, everything is, you know, just like it's supposed to be. Um, anyway, so now you know as much as I know. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, which is not very much, but a little something. So uh, any help that anybody can give here is fine. You know, we're not we're not uh, 
this is a small congregation, so you know it's kind of hard for everybody to do everything. So, but uh, it, it'll be non-denominational. You know, we just we, we'll have Baptists and Catholics and anybody else that's in there that wants to help. So uh, Presbyterians, Muslims, if they're already high school, that kind of stuff. But anybody wants to help. Chief, yeah. if the chief wants to help, chief can help. Yes. Um, I seem to recall that you mentioned needing suitcases. Oh, yeah. Good good point. She says that every time that they moved her from one place to another, they moved her in a black plastic sack. Right? Not much dignity in a black plastic sack. So uh, I am going to try to find some, what we used to call in the military grip, you know, something to put your clothes in, that kind of says you go one place or another. And I would like to, at some point in time, buy a, an embroidery machine. They are available, and you can buy them used, not too expensive, but, but you've got to have somebody that knows how to do that. So you can embroidery, you know, Kelly or Kate or John, Josh, or whatever your name is on it, you know, so they got something with their name on it, because there is some dignity in that. There's a thing in this time called Give Another Life and Give Another Life to Gold, I guess. Oh. Which is a good thing. Because if people grow up with some dignity, generally they become great citizens. And great citizens are what we need in this country. You know, I'm, 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 you, know, I'm, I, you cut me, I bleed red, white, and blue, just like you know, everybody else does. And uh, great citizens in this country are what will sustain us. So let's give people dignity and bring them along. And, and while, we're, while we're at that, uh, please give me some prayers for the people that you pray. Those are the people who suffered horribly. And they did nothing to get that suffering. Nothing. And uh, so, uh, you know, but we all know about that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hard to follow, Chief. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is a right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life. That when you shall come again in power and great time to judge the world, you may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Let us be excited to spiritual community and prayer together. Thank you, God. Mm-hmm. And the one who is in love. <coughs> and the people of the world. They don't the And he said, to be the world. So I come to see these skills and turn it on. I thank you that I have received the sacrament of Christ's passion.